Today we're going to talk about slice categories and that's going to lead us to talking about comma categories. Now comma categories are one of those things that people get very upset about because they think comma category is a silly term and it actually grew up by mistake because they hadn't thought of a notation for it and they were just using commas or maybe the, the commas were their notation, they hadn't used the, found a word for it so they just referred to it by comma and then it sort of stuck but never mind, she'll plow on and use the terminology anyway. So first of all, what's a slice category? Given a category C, given a category C, we can kind of slice it over some object in C. So we fix an object x in C, then we can form this slice category. Then we have C sliced over x, which has the following objects. So the objects of this category are pairs and objects in A together with a morphism down to x. So it's pairs a, P, like that. And then what's a morphism? Well, the morphisms are just exactly the morphisms they simply have to be. And you can, you can see how categorically you're thinking now by seeing if you can invent what these morphisms are while I'm writing them on the board. So let's see, the morphisms. So we have to think about morphisms from a pair A, P to a pair A prime, B prime. So if we just write out what that, that data is, it's A with a morphism down to X, and it's A prime with a morphism P prime down to X. So what could a morphism from here to here possibly be? Well, yes, it's going to be a morphism from A to A prime such that this triangle commutes. So the morphisms are F from here, there to there such that this triangle Now, there's also something else, which is a co-slice category, or a slice under. So now we can take our object and put our category kind of under it, and it's the dual of this. So now you can do all that yourself, I suppose, if you want to. The objects, now the x is going to be at the top, and the morphism is going in that direction. And the morphisms are, well, what's the data going to be? We're going to have one pair A, P like that. We're going to have another pair A prime, P prime like that. So this time the morphisms are going to be in that direction, making this triangle commute. Um, so why am I telling you about this? Well, one of the things I felt like saying was talking about uh, products in this category. So let's just take this part of the definition off. Actually, you know what? Before I say that, I should, I should point something out, which is that if C has a terminal object, then if you slice yourself over your terminal object, nothing's going to happen, right? So C sliced over the terminal object is just the same as C because the objects are going to be pairs, um, an object together with a morphism down to the terminal object. But there is only one morphism to the terminal object from any object. And so asking for a morphism down to the terminal object is no further information whatsoever from just having the object in the first place. So you don't get anywhere by doing that. And dually, Dually, if C has an initial object, initial object uh, zero, then, well, the dual result, result is true, which is that if you slice under zero, then you don't get anywhere. Right. Okay. So what was I going to say about products? What I want to show is that products in this slice category are the same as well, as the same as what, I wonder. So let's think about products. Products, a product in this slice category. 
Well, what's it going to be? So here's x. Everything lives over x, so we're just going to sort of put that on the board. Perhaps I'll put it in the blue, because this x just isn't going to move. Okay. Now, what do we take products of? Or rather, of what do we take products? We take them of two objects in our category. So let's put up two objects in our category. Here's A, with a map going down to here, which I'll call P. And here's, and oh, that's a terrible letter for it, S. And B, with a map going down to it, which I'll call T. Is this beginning to look familiar? What do you think could possibly happen when I take a product of this? Well, what's a product going to be? It's going to be an object of our category, of our slice category, together with projections down to the two objects we're taking a product of with some universal property. So let's start by writing up an object. Okay. So an object is going to be some object, let's call it uh, C. And because it's a morphism in an object in the slice category, it's got to come equipped with a morphism down to X like this. Right? So that's the object. Uh, let's call that P. And it's got to have projection maps as well. So it's got to have a, map, a projection map here. And because it's a morphism in the slice category, it means that this triangle has to commute. Uh, and we can call that, oh, that was terrible notation as well. I'll call that U for universal. Because usually our projection maps are called P and Q. So if we were going to write this in the non-geometrically intuitive way, we would write our pairs, A, S, here are the things we're taking product of. Here's our pair B, T. Um, I didn't really leave myself enough space, did I? Here's A, S, here's B, T, and here's the vertex C, U. And here's the map P that makes that, that triangle commute, and here's the map Q that makes this triangle commute. And so what we want is we want to say what the universal property for this product is, which is to say that given some other V comma, that means enough letters of the alphabet, uh, F, together with maps going like this, there's got to be a unique factorization down here. So what's that going to say? Here's V equipped with its map going down to here. And it's got to have also a morphism here and a morphism here. Then we've got to have a unique factorization like that. Now, it should start looking a bit like a pullback to you now. Because if you, if you just ignore these things coming down the diagonals, we've got a square here. And our universal property looks quite a lot like the universal property for a pullback. We just have to make sure that this really is a pullback. So let's think about it a bit harder. Does this square commute? Well, yes, it does, because this triangle commutes with the U thing, and this triangle commutes as well, which means that the square commutes. And likewise, the universal condition says, given that anything up here equipped with a map down to here, and the map here such that this triangle commutes. Now, because this map coming down here is just the composite of this and this. We could just not bother writing it and understand that it had to be that composite, right? And because this map coming down here had to be the composite of this and this, we can just not write that one as well and understand that what it was kind of there for was to assert that this square commuted. So this one asserted that the inside square commuted. The one from V down to here asserted that the outside square commuted. And then the factorization here, we know that it's got to be a morphism in our slice category. And what does that mean? That means that all the triangles in sight have to commute. Um, so we, can, we could write that out very slowly and show that the universal conditions really are the same. So when you're checking that some limit is the same as some other limit, you really have to check that, that the exists unique conditions are the same. And here, I hope that I've convinced you that that's going to be the same. The dual result, then, is that co-products in the slice under are the same as push-outs in the place that you started in.